Coral reefs are one of the world's most amazing ecosystems. They harbour an amazing 25% of marine life. But this ecosystem is very fragile. We know what the problem is. It's not like we're losing coral and we don't understand why. We know what the problem is and actually we have the solutions, we just now need to implement them. Myself and two colleagues established the Coral Nurture Programme to ensure reef resilience to future change. This is a first for the Great Barrier Reef. Coral reefs are amazing. They are biodiverse, full of life and colour and have so many important services that not only marine life but also us as humans rely on. My work is looking at naturally tolerant corals on the Great Barrier Reef to try and buy time for coral reefs that are under threat. This takes me actually into some quite surprising places. This includes mangrove lagoons on the Great Barrier Reef. People typically don't look there for corals because they're full of jellyfish and crocodiles, but actually that's really important because these conditions are so hostile that actually if we can find corals surviving in these conditions where the water is actually warmer, more acidic and has low oxygen conditions, like what we're predicting with climate change, we can study these corals to understand how they've adapted, what the cost of that adaption is and how we may use those corals to aid reef resilience and adaptation into the future. These corals that are extra tough found in these mangrove lagoons have been called super corals. But what is super? How tough is tough? Also, we know that every superhero has its downfall and we need to know what that is for super corals to ensure their future and how we use them. From studying these mangrove corals, we can understand what it is about them that allows them to survive there. We can also look at these mangrove corals and see if we can move them to new environments and actively restore degraded reefs. Unfortunately, as reefs continue to degrade, we're seeing a greater need to actually grow and plant corals onto the reef. The Coral Nurture Programme is a unique partnership between science and tourism, and it's based on the idea of site stewardship. Tour operators who have the immense knowledge of their sites and the infrastructure to regularly visit these sites are now able to grow corals that are found locally through what we call fragments of opportunity. Corals are really special because they reproduce sexually, but also they actually naturally fragment, and so they are asexually um, able to also reproduce. If we take those broken fragments that would typically just die and actually put them onto metal frames, grow them in a nursery, so the same as taking a plant clipping and growing that up, we can do the same with corals in these nurseries and then we can put them back on the reef. And by doing this, we're boosting the resilience of the reef by getting more biomass out. But also we have the infrastructure in place that when we are able to, and we feel that there is the need, we can put these more tolerant corals from the mangroves into these nurseries to grow them and put them out because we already know how to do it. Through the Coral Nurture Programme, we've been able to outplant over 30,000 corals to date. We're developing methods that ultimately we're hoping that we won't need to use. I'm definitely concerned about the future of our reefs, but I remain optimistic because we still have corals that have amazing biodiversity and that gives me hope that there's something worth fighting for. Many of the compounds we need for drugs are actually found from organisms living in or on coral reefs. If we lose the reef, all of that is lost. Many coral reef scientists now fear that corals will not have time to survive climate change without our intervention. Unfortunately, I've actually witnessed the impact that coral bleaching driven by climate change has had on reefs. I was actually in the Seychelles during the 2016 bleaching event and saw areas of several football pitches in size of coral cover die overnight. When you have loved something for so long and you're so passionate about it and you know it's not something that you just study, it's something you generally you know feel so much love for and you see it die and know that you 
can't do anything about that despite all your efforts and that you know that this isn't a one-off event and that this is going to continue to happen to reefs around the world it's really hard and it's really tough to see climate change is a really overwhelming topic for everybody and definitely for me sometimes it just feels like you know what can I as one person do about it but it's you know it is really true that if everybody has that opinion then nothing will change we have to remember that there are still coral reefs that are alive and for that reason you know I have hope to continue the research that I'm doing to try and ensure that those reefs don't suffer the same demise as, as the ones that were lost. I fell in love with reefs when I first got to snorkel on one when I was around nine years old I was really lucky and I just remember seeing the reef for the first time and I put my mask on and looked under the water and the fact that there was this whole underwater world just fascinated me. So I've always had that excitement and intrigue and wonder. It doesn't matter how many times I go on the reef, every time I still get those butterflies in my stomach and that excitement and just feel a real privilege that I get to study and work in such an amazing environment. We are entirely connected with nature and in turn the reef. We don't have to go to the mountains or go to the Great Barrier Reef to be connected. Every action, every decision we make has an impact on the environment around us. So no matter where you live, if you take positive steps to reduce your carbon emission, this in turn will have a really positive effect on the reefs around the world. We can actually look to coral as a great example of what an individual can achieve because the coral reef is made up of one, initially of one tiny polyp that grows into a colony and then collectively forms that reef. And so we you know we really could take a lesson from coral that each of us individually are connected and that if we work together can have really large and positive impacts.